Welcome aboard everyone, Simon here from the Wells of Wall Street. Guys, we're going to talk quickly here about Solve, S-O-L-V, on the exchange. So guys, it's one we cover quite a bit every now and then. Um, it's one that we've got an intro video to, so go check that out at the end of this one. We'll leave a link. Um, what's happened with Solve over the last couple of months or so, we'll dive into the chart at the end of this topic aspect. Uh, but guys, I wanted to sort of re-emphasize uh, why I'm so interested in Solve um, before we go on to a quick update from them um, and also just generally you know, what this kind of thing is about and for me um, I want to put a few things into perspective first of all okay so one thing's for sure is there's a multitude of projects out there um, and companies already in the health sector very much transitioning into the digital world but there's a very small handful that are, are utilizing the likes of blockchain um, to to help with this and what I mean by blockchain of that aspect is things like the supply chain mechanism the data transfer in terms of medical history and um, the avoidance of things like potential fraudulent activity or um, you know where people sometimes take perhaps potential benefits and things like this when they shouldn't be so there's loads of multitude of things um, but also with the integration of the world moving forward I need you guys to think outside the box for a second so when we're talking about blockchain and things like the dag protocols where i'm talking like if you have a medical problem and you've got a sensor inside you for example which are coming there's no doubt about it um we've seen a multitude of projects out there that are suggesting that that's not far away now um let's say you're about to have a heart attack maybe in a week's time or something like that and because of the algorithm and the data that this sensor has picked up off your body it's then automatically got everything sorted for you. Your transportation, your medical appointment, all of these kind of things um, being in fruition. Or it's the other way around. It's not perhaps so serious, but you want to check in to a, a doctor or whatever on the video call. Um, and then all of that's transferred onto blockchain, smart contracts, um, all this sort of you know ease of data um, verification and being able to access that. So there's a multitude of different things. Uh, in play for the future of digital healthcare. I'm going to give you an example of this morning. So as some of you know, I have had a horrible uh, dislocation injury last week in football on my ankle. Uh, I've been trying my best to keep it elevated and rested and this, that and the other. Um, you know, and I've uh, got to a point today, this morning, where I woke up and I was like, this pain's getting annoying now, it's keeping me awake, uh, there's bruising and stuff like this. I've already had x-rays and things, so I know it's not broken, um, so I can be positive on that aspect. So what did I do? Uh, I don't have a Solve account, because they're not in the UK yet, but I, I went through uh, our private medical cat app, uh, Babylon, which is through Boopa, just to give you an example of this kind of emphasis of how the world is right now, okay? So obviously... I don't like going to the doctor. I hate going to the doctor. I hate going to hospitals, right? I only go there if I really, really, really need to. Okay, that's just me. I know a lot of people out there just go because they got a sniffing nose or something or whatever it is, and they just go, whatever. Um, and it puts a lot of pressure on the systems, uh, a lot of pressure on medical staff and this, that, and the other. But in the last couple of years, of course, we've had the pandemic and everything like that, and it has reduced significantly the impact um, on hospitals because not only have they put almost a fear factor of people wanting or trying to go to hospital and this, that and the other, but there's also the other side, which is kind of bad really, is putting a lot of people off that perhaps do need medical care, um, but maybe put off by going. Um, so this kind of technology is all about the awareness and bringing it to people's attention that it's there, okay? So yes, of course, some of this is private healthcare, um, I'm sure public services will become more and more frequent. We have been trialing here in the UK, obviously, the last year or so with calls, first of all, with a like a triage nurse or a GP, rather than coming in, waiting for 20 minutes, seeing a doctor for 15, 20 minutes. It's a quick call to say, like, what is actually going on with you? Actually, you don't need to come in. We'll do this, this and this. Um, the advantage of me this morning, I did a video call with an awesome uh, physio uh, because all the information I put in as a brief it said, you don't need to talk to a GP, talk to a physio, talk to him, send him some pictures via the app uh, before the appointment. Um, and then the appointment was literally 10 minutes later. So I sat here, waited 10 minutes, the, the video call came through. I was able to show him on the video my foot, what motions I could do, where the pain points were. Um, and that was it. 
And literally that took about five minutes. I said, like, clearly there's still bruising and swelling and this thing. I'm being open about my my medical situation here, but I'm trying to give you the point of aspect of what was possible. Uh, within that, I mentioned, like, look, I, I'm perhaps being kept awake too much by this still. So he's put a GP appointment in via the same app for later today, uh, 9 o'clock tonight, because it's 24-7 service. I mean, I know it's quite busy today. If I booked it for tomorrow, I could probably got any time, but that's fine. And he's also got me a referral for a physio, a physical physio appointment, which could be done potentially at the end of this week. That's how quick this whole system can be. And I want to bring up the point which was made in a few videos back in the comments section. Someone mentioned that they're in New Zealand in a very rural area, about two hours away from the city. And it's very difficult for them to get medical attention when they need it. So they have been um, trialing this kind of project and saying that this kind of um, technology and, and solution would be incredible for their community because then they don't have to worry about the big travel. And nine times out of ten, it's it's not a big, a big medical issue. It can be sorted out or, or rest assured by a, a simple call. Uh, but they might need the attention and that's when the tokenomics aspect will kick in and, and deliver all the aspects of transport, uh, medical history, all of these things in the future. So I think there's a gigantic place for it, a massive place for it, especially when we talk about things like there's like over one billion people in the world that are, don't have access to ID or in front of this because of this, that and the other or, or two billion people unbankable. Blockchain opens this up to anyone and everyone, um, albeit that obviously you have to have some form of, of recognition of who you are. And that's the beauty of KYC, KYB. And I think it's a beauty to have this element of technology that's not it's not arguably new um it's been around for a while i've utilized this kind of service but to have it on blockchain is going to open this up to so many people and where i talk about in some videos about tier two society the way the world is going um you know and people potentially being removed from the systems of public health and this that and the other we need to give another solution to people a decentralized solution essentially uh, giving people the power and people the opportunity to have an equal life like everyone else there should not be a world in this day and age where some people have medical care and some people don't. It should be equal. And I feel like through tokenomics and blockchain, this is going to fix a lot of those issues of diversification and equality as well. There's a multitude of other projects in there. Go and check it out on Coin Market Cap. A couple I've done a bit of research on, I don't think they're quite ready. Um, some, I think Mediblock and a couple of others, very Korean based. They need to branch out to a bit more diversification in their language on the website and stuff like that. But I feel like Solve is one of those critical areas because of the people behind it, because of the people involved. You know, very, very big physicians and scientists around the world are involved in this now, doctorates. Um, you know, there's a load of stuff going on here. Care Labs, for example, a quick update here. Um, after the Global Telehealth Exchange um, launch, they're now bringing the care network together. This is bringing a multitude of um, expertise around the world to come together to improve the practices, the efficiency, the cost effectiveness, and building patient-friendly healthcare networks worldwide. This is what decentralization and blockchain is about, in my opinion. This is about bringing people together, not seeing competition between hospitals or different competition between countries. This is bringing people together, because the only way, in my opinion, to get the world going in the right direction is to bring everyone together. If you have an expert mindset in a certain field, bring it together as a community. Don't hide it, don't be selfish with it. Bring it together as a team, and we can make the world better. So I really love what Solve Care stands for um, in that aspect. And let's just have a look at the chart because a lot of people complain about the price movements and stuff. And for me, I see outside this, okay, we had a fantastic run earlier this year. If you remember, we covered it. <laughs> um, they were doing like a little partnership announcement um, and it went from pretty much around that six, seven cent mark, shot up all the way here to near enough, I think it was 54 cents, not quite near the, I think the new all-time high was 60 cents, absolutely incredible, and I said, like, you're going to have to ensure this comes down really, because we need support mechanism here, but it fluctuated, it came down, I think our lowest points around here, about 11, um, uh, sorry, at eight and a half to nine cents, and we still recently started floating above the 10, so it's really interesting that we had this very, very slow movement historically with Solve, uh, to the point where we took it up, brought it down and it has very much resisted at that 10 cents level thus far uh, as a recording it's still above that 10 cent mark in fact let's just pull this up so you can see a bit more detail so we're still um down on the on the weekly and the monthly but not massively not significantly enough to be concerned massively about it 
On the month, on the three months, obviously understandable because it's taken into consideration this big move. But in general, I want people to think about the future. Okay, when I'm investing, I'm looking at a price point right now with Solve, the way digital healthcare is going, and the way the all the you know potential lockdowns and pandemics and things will go for the next few years, the narratives, etc. I'm looking ahead to think how many more people forget private healthcare for a second, the ability for anyone and everyone to join via Toyconomics, a platform like Solvecare, okay? The ability to anyone and everyone to be able to do that. Think of the mass adoption, right? And when we get to the Tokenomics aspect, I'm not too fussed about it right now, but in the future, as the tokens get more and more used because of the things we just spoke about, we talk about projects like Blocksmove, for example, very much an integration of various different uh, projects out there the likes of iota with the tangle mechanism all these things have to interoperable have to be interoperable right they have to work together they have to bridge together and that's why i'm so focused and excited about medical related projects especially these kind of ones things like bio the biology uh, passports all these digital ids healthcare has a gigantic market we talked about in previous videos trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars worth around the world and if solve can get a small percentage of that it's happy days. We know there's big companies out there like AXA, like Bupa, like other big companies out there that are bringing services like this to the table, but they don't have blockchain integrated. And I'm sure at some point they might do that. So we've got to be considerate that there's big companies like IBM out there, other healthcare related companies, um, you know, Cisco to an extent, Accenture. I'm sure, well, we know Accenture do a lot of blockchain stuff for sure, but there will be opportunities and space for projects like Solvecare here as well. Other analysis on this chart right now, guys, let's just move into more about the price point. As I said, we're stabilizing around this 10 cent mark. I think it's giving great stability here. Um, we have had some tests down below the 10 cents and it's rejected those thus far. I'm not saying we're fully out of that that uh, possible transition, but we've have had some good news with Solve recently. We're still just about in a I wouldn't call it severe bullishness, but it's certainly in a positive aspect. The RSI has been at its lowest point here on the 4th of December on a 14 day at 38. And it's now floating around this 49.50 mark. So it's very much in a limbo mode. But look at that on the 28 day and the 90 day as well. Very much level. In my opinion, this is very stable and very promising for a big tail up. If another few good announcements come out, as well as the general organic growth of the markets over the next you know, few weeks or the next month or two into the big bull run, hopefully still coming, um, this is in a very good position. We've had the big sell-off, as we've mentioned, and understandably so. Um, but, you know, I think this has got um, some really good support behind it now. The price point, in my opinion, is very good. Just be wary that we may still have a couple of dip downs. But you can at least dollar cost average that and reduce the risk by by getting into these areas. Not financial advice. This is what I'm personally doing. I'm personally purchasing Solve. I was purchasing it left, right, and center at six, seven cents. I'm still doing it at this level here. I I managed to sell off most of mine uh, when we got to around 44, 45 cents, I think it was, and and watched the drop down. Did two or three uh, buy-ins on the way back down. I think my lowest point was about 12 cents, um, and I've just left it. And I've just been buying at these these periods of time so i managed to get a bit of a head start further with adding more from accumulation of dca uh dollar cost averaging um and and taking advantage of this stabilization you see the charts everywhere right now are so unstable but solve seems to be quite secure at the moment um like i said i'm not not um saying that it's going to stay straight here um we might get more dip downs and this that, and the other but for me anything below 10 cents i'm just snapping up straight away and i think other people are as well because it's clear that on a few occasions now in the last two weeks where we tried to do that it's it's rejected that very very quickly so people are very interested in this and of course the volumes is now kicking back in slowly um you know not massively but slowly and the positivity is 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 very much there but just be anticipated that as we showed you on the macd here let's put this up one more time um let me try and move that up a bit more so we can see it in a bit more detail as well um you've got the aspect here of um having this nice bubble up here and a bit more of a touch point so just about today i don't know if you can see it but we've got a tiny tail up today though, so far so we might have another bounce off then into a positive momentum but just do be wary that we're on the, on the sort of brink of these crossover patterns here so it's it's one of those where i said like um you know reducing the risk to an extent 
Um, but yeah, just be cautious, uh, but equally uh, appreciate that this is a massively undervalued project for the future. I'm not saying necessarily for this bull run. I'm talking about the future of where digital healthcare is going and where solve care is going as a project. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that and learned a bit more as well. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next solve update video, hopefully next week, once we see a bit more of a pricing move in the charts. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.